Hey guys, this is Ben, the former president of False and Esco Film Club and the current producer. I'll be here in about half an hour to answer our questions, but for now, here's the workshop. If you guys are watching this on the YouTube channel, congrats you found our channel. And if you go to Falston High School and you're interested in joining Falston High School Film Club, we meet every Friday in room 109 after school. So come check us out. And if you're at the workshop, glad you can make it. Today we're talking about pre-production, so I'm going to hand it over to Mark. Hello, Falston High School Film Club, and welcome to an introduction to pre-production a short film about the very basics of the pre-production process. There are three main stages when it comes to filmmaking. There is pre-production, production, and post-production. Uh, today we are covering pre-production, which is everything from the idea of the movie up until the camera starts rolling. So this covers everything from script making to storyboarding to location finding to making sure you have the right equipment. Anything that you need before filming. This is one of the most important stages of filmmaking and it unfortunately is often ignored by amateurs. But as you will learn, preparation is everything when it comes to making a good film. So, how a fifth grader would do pre-production is they would come up with an idea. They would think of something and go, hey, that'd make a good movie. They would jot down a just rough summary of the idea, if even. Sometimes they just jot down the title of it to remind them of it later. Then they would write a small outline, nothing much, just a general plot summary. Then maybe write a script. Usually, if any, it would be unformatted. And then most of the time what happens is they jump straight into production with no actual planning. They think, all right, we have an idea, let's just set up a camera and go, which is not the correct way to do it. How you're supposed to do it is you come up with your idea, the, that would make a good movie moment, and then you write down as much as the idea as you possibly can. You write down character bios, you write down full plot, you write down details of any scenes you already have planned, anything you can. Then you write a pitch. Uh, what a pitch is, is it's called an elevator speech. Some people refer to it as that. Because the situation is, if you happen to run into Steven Spielberg in an elevator, and you have 30 seconds to pitch this idea to him, what do you say? This is about a paragraph or two, just a very brief plot summary of your movie. Once you have that, you can present the pitch to a producer. In our case, that would be one of the board members, meaning either myself, Benjamin Topi, Braden, or our current head of pre-production, Austin McBride. Preferably give it to him. Once you do that and you get the general concept of the film approved, the next step is to write a treatment. And what a treatment is, is as opposed to a two-paragraph description of your film, this is a two-page description of your film, est estimate. It doesn't have to be exactly two pages. This is, in detail, everything you can about this film. This is just to get the idea on paper, solid. You can come back to it at any time, and this is to help you write the script. And then the next step is writing the script in correct format. We will have an entire separate video on how to do correct script format, so stick around for that. After you write the script, you will present it to, once again, one of the board members, me, Ben, Braden, or preferably Austin, and we will give you critiques about it, what's good, what's bad, what should change, what should stay, and then you use those changes to fix your script to make it better. And then, after we repeat that a couple times, we end up with the final product that everyone's happy with. And ignore that bottom part. Uh, pretend it doesn't exist. It's important, it just doesn't belong there. Now, how you're supposed to have continued, this is important enough to require two slides. After you write your script and or treatment, like I said on the previous slide, present it to one of us. We tell you what to change, you change it, then it's all good. 
and then draw a storyboard. This is a step that is very often skipped by amateurs, and you can tell a difference between making a film with a storyboard and making one without a storyboard. What a storyboard is, is basically a comic strip of your movie. This lets you draw in how characters are placed on the screen. This lets you draw in different camera angles, different settings, different lightings. This lets you convey a lot onto paper that you can't necessarily do with just a script. And the point of it is that it lets everybody kind of see as close to your vision as possible. So if you just have a script, not everybody is going to be like on the same boat with it. Like some person could be picturing it one way when someone else is picturing it another way. And it can cause confusion when you actually go to film. But drawing a storyboard makes it so you have one thing that you can go off of that everyone agrees on of this is how it's supposed to be. And now, once you're done that, you can move on to selecting a location. This is where you go out and you find where you want to film. This can be houses, forests, preferably in the school, but we can be lenient on that. And once, once you get to those locations, it's good to plan out where you want different shots. Like, usually what we do is when we drive out to a location, we just take a camera with us and we set up, hey, this would be a cool shot, or hey, this shot that I was picturing may not work. And next is shooting an animatic. This is another very important step that is almost always skipped by amateurs. And what shooting an animatic is, is shooting basically a practice film. So, doesn't have to be the actors, um, preferably at the location you want. And what you do is you just shoot a miniature, a, a, like a miniature of what the story is actually going to be. I'm doing a bad job of describing it, which is why I'm probably going to play a video over this of a animatic that we have shot in the past, compared to what the actual film looks like. And this is, once again, just like the storyboard, to get everyone on the same page. Um, you can use not only storyboard, but the animatic to have a concrete idea of what you want on the final product. Most of the times, what an amateur will do is they will shoot an animatic, but then they'll stop there and call it their final film. You have to realize there is a very important difference between shooting an animatic and shooting a final product. The animatic is basically a proof of concept. This is to help create your final product, but this is not your final product. And once you're done on that, you can move on to casting. This is determining who you want to play which character. It's basically straightforward. In the film club, we're usually going to have auditions for parts. We, we've attempted doing miniature auditions before and it worked out pretty well. So I think we're going to continue doing that this year unless the author of the piece specifically wants a specific person to play a specific role. But we'll figure all of that out. And then afterwards, you fill out the necessary paperwork, release forms, permits, etc. Uh, we don't necessarily have to worry about that because we are a non-profit group and school funded. You know, if we're filming in the school, we don't need any permits. And if we're filming outside of school, we have a release form that hopefully you've all going to sign. And then you schedule a shoot day, and then you go at it. This is a general script format. I'm not going to go over it in detail on this video because, as I mentioned before, there will be a separate video just on this topic. 
but if you want to pause the video and look at it, you can, but it will be covered in a separate video. Repeat what I said on last slide. This here is a storyboard. These are two different storyboards, but this is an example of a storyboard can be incredibly detailed, like this here on the right. I believe this is the storyboard for the movie Alien. This, this is widely regarded as one of the best storyboards ever made. Incredibly detailed. You can see just this was obviously made by a professional artist. We don't have that, so our storyboards are going to look more like this, which is completely fine. It'll show you little descriptions, like you can see who's in the scene. You have arrows to indicate motion. You can have descriptions on the bottom. You know this one is a pan shot because of this note. And then using this, this gives you a far clearer idea of what the final product is going to look like than what just a script would tell you. This is an auxiliary piece. This is that tidbit that I told you to ignore on the previous slide just because it was out of order. This includes scene selection. This includes shot lists, which is what you see right here, along with storyboards and a bunch of other things that I won't go into detail with right now. But what a shot list is, is just in order what shots you want in your film. So you see in this little description, they want this shot to be shot in Vimeo offices. And then a little description, a little description of the frames, you can tell there's no dialogue, and this is, once again, just to make sure everyone's on the same page when it comes to the film. This is another example of an auxiliary piece. This is a character bio. This is another thing that is very important because this, although it doesn't show up in the final product of the film, this is what lets your actors know about their character. It lets them get a more in-depth understanding of the character that they're going to be playing. So as opposed to just going off what the script tells them about the character, they know all of this previous background information about the character and how they should act according to that. And this is a black screen. This is usually what our final products look like. And guys. Well, I hope you learned something from Mark's ramblings. That was our first in hopefully many videos on how to make movies. If you guys are not at the workshop today and you are currently on YouTube, again, we meet every Friday after school in room 109. If you are at the workshop and you would like to access this on YouTube, just go to our YouTube channel, Falston High School Film Club. It will be posted here, uh, along with all of our other videos that we make on how to make movies and the films that we create as a club. If you want to access any of the files, ask Mark, give him your email, and he can send you links to all the files. We keep all our workshop PowerPoints on here, so if you want to just watch the PowerPoint and not watch the YouTube video, it will be on our OneDrive. Or you can sign up for our Remind. Ask, again, ask Mark about that, and he will help you guys get set up on the Remind so you get all the updates.